Hi, I'm Al McRobbie at Sailing Company, and today we're looking at a line of interface converters brought to us by KK Systems in England. And we've been working with this company for many, many years, and they make very high quality products with um, very, very low failure rates. So this is a, this, these are really a uh, very nice product, very high quality, as I've mentioned. Um, <clears throat> they have a couple of different partitions to the line and first I want to say that this this is not all that they make they make about twice as many products as we're showing here they have 15 products here and they make close to 30 or more of just data conversion products of all different styles so if you if you have a need for something and you don't see it here during this presentation give me a call and um, we can discuss what your requirements are and we can probably set you up with something that works the 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 area that they specialize in really is RS-232 to 422 or 485 data conversion. And they have a series of inline converters here and they have some DIN rail converters that do that. Um, they also have these, these products that they have here in the middle that are black are USB to either uh, 232 or 485 converters here, um, which, are, which are really very good devices as well. Going back to the inline converters, um, as we've said, they, these are mainly for RS-422 or RS-485, depending on what your requirements are, and they are uh, configurable to a certain extent. Um, let me give you an example here on this one. The uh, K2 is really for full duplex 422. That's what it was originally designed for. Uh, it has some, some setup dip switches underneath here in, in, in the back that can be set up according to what your needs are. And the, you can see that the case styles come in, in either the two DB9 females or they come in a DB9 female and a, and a five, five terminal terminal block here. And that's, that's fairly common for what they're using in their inline converters right here. Um, if you need to have um, RTS control and you don't have it on the PC that's running your system, you can choose one of the two components here called the K2 ADE, which has auto drive enable. And the, the feature to turn that on or off is controlled again by the dip switches and also the bits per second or baud rate is also controlled by the dip switches as well and, and some other things. One thing that I need to point out is that each one of these devices comes with a comprehensive data sheet uh, and user guide. And for the cases of these smaller units, we have a six page um, instruction sheet right here, which has everything that you need to know to set up one of these things properly. One thing I should mention about these is that they get their power from either the RTS or the DTR lines. Uh, the, either of these lines or both need, need to be high on occasion to, to power these units up. Um, if you're driving really long lines, um, more than 300 meters with these, then you may need to introduce some power which can be done through the RS-232 connector. You can, you can wire up a, a little bridge in there to go between the, the master controller and this unit, and you can put in um, plus nine to 16 volts in there that's, that should be regulated. Um, so 16 volts is the maximum. Um, as I mentioned earlier, they, the inline converters are in two general families. There's the non-isolated kind here, and then there's the larger isolated ones right here. And the, the, there's a little bit more components in here, so a little bit bulkier. Uh, one thing to note on these is that they can be powered by a little coaxial DC jack right here and, it, and the polarity and the voltage is, is given right on the back of the unit right here. So that makes that relatively easy to do, to set up. These, these, K, these K3 units here uh, perform similarly to the K2 units, but they are isolated and they come with the, the two DB9 females or with the terminal blocks, uh, as we've noted before. Uh, so let's move on to some of these other ones that are DIN rail units. 
Um, these are two port uh, interface converters that re require a power supply be put in on this port down here on terminal seven and eight. And the instructions for that are here on the side of the unit. And um, these are all the same sort of, of thing in that regard. They have, um, they come in three different varieties based on how much that they can do. This is a simple one here, which is called the KD485 standard. And it's an, it's an interface converter, which um, in this particular case is configured as an RS-232 on port one and an RS-422 or 485 on port two. And these, this is, these are all isolated converters as well up here. So they come in, in three different flavors. They come in the very standard model here. They come in the ADE or auto drive enable model right here. And then there is the, the more or less most complex unit here is the, the 485 prog, which has both a double E prom and a microprocessor inside. And programs can be loaded into these, these type here. Um, that actually can be set up to do data conversion uh, as the data is being brought into port one. It can be processed and converted into a different format uh, coming out port two and vice versa. And so there is a there is memory and a, a little microprocessor inside this unit that does that. Your code can be written in ANSI C, and there is a compiler that's available. Uh, in order for you to do that. These units here come with a very comprehensive 50 page user guide that shows you again everything that you need to know about how to set one of these things up. And so that pretty much comprises these, these three units. They make several more of these types. So again, if you don't see what, if you, don't see what, you're, what you need here, please give me a call. They also make units that have four to 20 milliamp current loop outputs and they also make a device that has an optical interface. So it, it has a, a pair of optical connectors for fiber coming out as well. So that's, that's another one. So <clears throat> lastly, uh, KK Systems also makes a couple of USB to serial converters. Here's one here that's a USB to 232 and another one here that's USB to 485. The, both of these converters use the FTDI chipset inside and drivers for those are located uh, on these mini CD-ROMs here, as well as the operating instructions. Um, there's another copy as well as this brochure here. And these are units that can be set up so that they are they remember the COM port number that they're, that they're always on on a particular computer. So you can unplug them and put them in another uh, port on the computer and they will still be COM1 or COM2 or COM3, whatever it was that you assigned them. And so if you have multiple converters, they will all remember their own COM port assignments. Uh, that's one of, the, one of the good features of these particular units. So, uh, that's just a very quick overview of the KK line that we've had. Uh, very successful, high quality line that we provide. And uh, if you have any questions about it, please feel free to give us a call. And thanks for watching.